Hello, group. Jeff here. Today, I want to try to show how you can get a panoramic image into Stellarium for your location. And one of the biggest reasons why I did it was because I have some huge trees that block a lot of my sky. They'll never come down in my lifetime. <laughs> uh, and it makes going to targets uh, without it kind of hard because you just don't know for sure if you're going to be in the tree or just above the tree. And what I have found that since since I have done this is that I am no longer uh, going to targets as much that are in the tree lines or in the trees. And it has made my uh, Stellarium usage much more enjoyable because now I'm actually going to targets instead of going and uh, I'm in the tree. So what I will do is attempt to show how I got it working and where I got all my information on how to do it from. So I'm going to switch to the desktop and the first place we'll go is uh, the mountain cam group. And you want to go down to the wiki section and uh, the very top entry is creating a panoramic for Stellarium, and this was done by Jaime Sabab. Thanks, Bob. Really appreciate it. Made my life very easy. So what I do is in Edge, Edge has a reading mode. If you click on it, it makes reading stuff on screen, I don't want to say enjoyable, but easier. And I also print in the reading mode because it gets rid of all the junk that uh, websites like to put up on, uh, on docs. So you just have the pertinent information printed. So what I want to show next is that this warning is very important. And it's nothing to be afraid of. It's just a warning to be sure to change the image width to 2048, and that's in pixels. If you go over this, Stellarium will probably choke. And uh, you'll wonder why it's not working. This is important. Uh, I used PNGs to save uh, my, my panoramic. And uh, the reason why you want to use something like a PNG is that the uh, PNG file format allows for transparencies. So when you create your panoramic or panel, however you make it, we're not going to do that here. Uh, that's not the intent of this. However you make the panoramic image, you need to get it into some, uh, whether it's Photoshop, GIMP, uh, PaintShop, Pro, uh, Paint.net, anything that will allow you to select the background, cut that out and turn it into a transparency, then save the file as a PNG, that's what you're going to need to do. And you want to always make sure that the width is 2048 and no more. So what I did was, well, we have this disclaimer out of the way. <clears throat> is we need to create a folder or we need to have a folder that we can put into the landscape folder inside the Stellarium folder that's going to have our panoramic and a landscape uh, .ini file. And this landscape .ini file is going to have uh, basically this information. We are making a spherical, and this is important, you want a spherical panoramic. And this will become apparent uh, as we get further along. So you want to name your landscape file. 
you could put your name in if you wish for the author. The description is, uh, in my case, driveway OBS. Type of panoramic is spherical. You want to make sure that that's the way it reads. This is your picture name. In my case, it's uh, driveway, what is it? Let's go to program file, Stellarium, landscape. There's my file. It's called driveway underscore panel, PNG, dot PNG. So that's what would go here. This map tricks or map ticks, whatever, top is the top edge of your panoramic. 90 degrees is right at the uh, very top of the, of the sphere. Minus 90 is at the very bottom of the sphere. And you use these numbers to align your uh, spherical uh, image up and down on the sphere so that uh, for your location, things match up. The rotation is the seam. So if your, uh, if you're not quite pointing where you want it to, you would change this number to rotate the panoramic. And that's how you line up uh, to north. Uh, you want to put your latitude and longitude in and then your altitude. And for me, I was at, uh, let's see, I'll, we'll show you my information. So here's all my information, driveway, Jeff, driveway OBS, spherical, there's my panel name. Uh, I have 75 degrees up, minus 85 down, because I'm not quite, I didn't quite go, I didn't quite look down to the very bottom and then I'm rotated 63 degrees to line up my marker in the image. This is my lat longitude and altitude and this file goes in my driveway folder with the panel image and the landscape.ini. So one thing I want to show in the landscape image is uh, all of this is a transparency, all the sky. So you can see that wherever you're looking through the trees, you can see a little black. And that is really what, uh, if you're in my yard, that's what you would see when you're looking at the sky. This stick is marking north for me, or close to north. This is my, where I put my C14, and... You can't quite see it, but right there is where I put, uh, I will be putting the Raza. Those are my marks for it. And if we go to Stellarium, this is the panel though. There's the seam. You can see I wasn't quite level, but I'm not going to worry about it for like a half a degree or a degree, maybe. <laughs> Big deal. And it was sunny and yeah, I had some clouds, so uh, you can see this doesn't quite match up. I don't care. You don't see it in the dark. So here's my marker right here. And if we go up to Polaris, you'll see that I'm very close to north. In fact, that lines up better than that. So I will show you right now, I have to close Stellarium to do this, but I'm going to cut, I'll cut this and put it on the desktop. I will go in and I'm going to edit this number to 50. And we'll save it. And I'm going to cut it again. And we're going to go back to the Stellarium folder.
landscapes, my driveway, and I'm going to paste that back. Now you can't do, you can't have this file in this folder inside of Stellarium and make changes. You have to move it out someplace and then bring it back in. Windows will choke on it. So now if I open up Stellarium again, what we will see is that my stick is now on the other side of, of uh, north. It's to the left side. So there's my stick. There's north. It's now on the left side. It used to be over here. So that's how you move or line up your panorama. And you'll see that this, the top of this tree has now got Polaris right over it. Actually, Polaris needs to be over here. So I'll close Stellarium again. We'll cut this. We'll paste it into the desktop. We'll go back in. I'll make this 63 again. We'll save it. I'll cut it. And we'll go back into Stellarium. Back into my driveway. And paste it. And if I open up Stellarium, and you can't have Stellarium open when you're doing either. You have to close it. You'll see now that the stick is on the other side of north. It was over here. Now it's back over here. And that's how you line up your panoramic in uh, east-west. Uh, and then the Changing these numbers here, if you, if you know for sure that your panoramic is going from the very bottom to the very top, you would have 90 minus 90, but that's never the case because you're cutting so much sky out. And I didn't want to have a file that had all that extra sky. And it's tough for the software to do a blue sky. It just, there's no reference point. So when it attempts to make the panoramic, it will usually choke. So you just want to go above the tree line when you're making your panoramic, and then no need to go any higher. Because you have these numbers to change to get you where you need to be. So top 90 is straight up, minus 90 is straight down. And this is for the bottom edge, bottom and top edge. So that's top edge, bottom edge of your image. And then the uh, 0, 1, 0 is how you rotate the image to get the, uh, your mark of north in the right position. So I hope I uh, explained this to the best. Of, oh, I know what I need to do. So once you have uh, your file in the uh, landscape folder, and in my case, I called it driveway. You can then open up Stellarium, and you go to the sky and viewing options, and you go to landscape, and you'll see there's my driveway. You select it, and it should change to your background. And then if everything is cool, you would go to the config window and save the settings. And then that way it will always load, it will always know to load that background as the default. If you want to have, uh, in my case, because of the way my mount's parked, I set my mount to home positions and then do my polar alignment. So I'm always looking north. So I have my view set to true to north. So what you would do is, uh, once you have this set uh, to, the, to the position you want, you would save the view. Not save settings, but save the view. And that will always open up Stellarium in, in my case, a north orientation. So if I close 
this and open it again, you'll see that when Stellarium opens, I'm in in a north orientation, which is the way my mount is looking, regardless of which mount it is. If it's this one or this one out here, I'm always looking north with the software. And that uh, that helps me. Uh, the software is looking at the same way that the mounts are when I'm first starting out all of my stuff, which makes life much easier for me. So I hope you uh, were able to get some uh, Im enough information to allow you to. Oops. get your own panoramic going in Stellarium, it's very helpful. I used to have to uh, uh, always guess, and I will 90% of the time or higher, I was in the trees because I, I just had no reference point of where, uh, how high I could go, how low I could go. And this uh, has made my life so much easier. I'm now so much better at, at finding targets that are very close to my tree lines. And uh, especially when I'm going for planets, I know what time they're going to be around uh, because they come up. Uh, I have a, that big tree, this big tree, that uh, this one right here, this big tree is hiding all my planets. In fact, Orion is coming up behind this tree. So I'm probably about another month away before uh, it's up enough later in my uh, viewing session that I can start shooting it. And before this, I would never ever have any idea of how bad this tree was affecting my, my uh, east and southeast views. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you know where I live. See you in the group.